Let's open another ionizer. In this case, it's a new ion ionizer. Very nice case. It's very stylish. It's got the one, two, three needles here, a little green indicator LED. And it says Oasis. And it was made in Britain. Pull in Dorset. Um, let's just get straight into this and open it up. So what is an ionizer? An ionizer is a device that was originally invented by Alexander Chichevsky. Uh, that's wrong. Chizevsky is the better pronunciation. Alexander Chizevsky, a Russian scientist, he was basically researching the effect of electrostatic charge in the air on humans. And he came up with what was called the Chizevsky chandelier. And it was a device that had a high voltage power supply that applied a strong negative voltage onto a suspended chandelier from the ceiling that was just purely ion emitters. And this chandelier uh, just then charged all the air in the room to a high negative voltage. And it, it's unfortunate that uh, the image that is associated with these is one of a uh, sort of quackery, you know, oh, it imparts wellness and healthfulness. In reality, the real benefit is taking ultra fine dust and dirt out there. Let me show you what's inside this one. And this one has been written in. I'm not sure it's me who wrote that. LED with no diode, exclamation mark, 68K. Actually, it looks like a red band, but it's, uh, that wouldn't make sense if that is just in line with a ordinary LED. I'm seeing a... I'm seeing that label up there, New Ion, actually has a sort of recess under it. I wonder if they originally meant to have a illuminated logo on that. Maybe a neon down here on the board making that glow. So let me uh, talk you through the circuitry in this. Alexander Chizevsky's uh, chandeliers were based on... Um, I think the first ones were based on a traditional high voltage transformer with a voltage multiplier, which is what this is. Just a few stages of that, and then it created a high negative voltage. That evolved a, a engineer, a British engineer called Cecil Laws, developed the domestic one, this a much smaller unit that could be used in the home. And he also, I think, uh, used a transformer and voltage, small mo voltage multiplier. But it was later discovered, maybe it was just the evolution of components, that these uh, capacitors, which are 10 nanofarads, 630 volt, by using 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 11 times 2, 22, that is a really common arrangement. You'll find that in the mountain breeze units as well. But by using these little capacitors running from the main supply in the UK, which, uh, well, Europe, 230 to, uh, 220 to 240 volts, an average of about 230 volts, um, they discovered that, you know, a, a simple multiplier was all that was required for that with uh, 1N4 007 1000 volt diodes. So this is a voltage multiplier where each of these capacitors effectively charges to the full peak mains voltage of about 330 volts. And by the time you've added it up, you get to a good few thousand volts then, which is required for ionization. The output of that then goes through these two high value resistors, brown, black, blue, one zero. Six one zero and six zeros. That's ten meg ohm for each of those. So that's twenty meg ohm total. And the point of those resistors is because effectively, and the reason there's two of them is effectively, you could touch that, and there is a path through these diodes right down to the, well, down to the the live connection here. And this so this limits the current. It's a safety feature, and it goes to sharp needles. So a circuit board here with needles placed through. And just protruding very slightly front, just enough you could probably stab yourself, but not go in too deeply on them. It's a, a safety feature. And when you apply a charge to those needles at high negative voltage, because uh, whereas in conventional theory, electrical theory, electricity flows from positive to negative, uh, the electron flow is actually from negative to positive. So that high negative charge means that the air in the vicinity of these sharp points gets charged the negative. It gets extra electrons added onto it and the air leaves this with a charge and it creates this aura static charge around the unit. And it has a very profound cleaning effect. It's maybe the reason these things fell out of favour, partly because when you plug them in, not a lot visible happens. You might if you put your ear up close, you might hear a very slight hiss from the needles. In a very, very dark room, you might see the tiniest, 
faintest purple corona glow, but a proper ionizer like this doesn't create much in the way of ozone with corona discharge. There's a misconception a lot of uh, ozone generators are sold as ionizers because there's this whole quack industry around the word ionize. Um, they're the ozone generators are absolutely not generally ionizers. The only true ionizers usually have a sharp needle like this or they have the carbon fibre, either little clusters of carbon fibre or just a piece of the string relying on it being slightly frayed to actually create all those sharp edges. But does it clean the air? Well, judge for yourself. I just took this picture. This is one of the ionizers I have in this house. This... Uh, windowsill is supposed to be white. I've left it there for a while and the any airborne impurities, this is, I have to say, a couple of years, any airborne impurities get settled out in the vicinity and it's most vivid in the vicinity of the ionizer itself. If you want to test this ionizer, for instance, and you want to see if it's working, simply get a sheet of white paper, place it on it, plug it in, leave it running for a couple of days, and then just lift it up. And you'll see that the outline of the ionizer on the paper is grubby, but it happens so slowly that it's almost imperceivable. You know, this this didn't just happen overnight. This has built up over time. But that shows the effect, and it happens to the whole room. But you don't really see that happening because it is so gradual. that, And that's maybe one of the reasons they're they're unpopular is because they're considered dirty, because they do precipitate the dirt out there electrostatically. But by saying they precipitate the dirt out there, if you think of the most uh, compact mesh HEPA filter that's supposed to take the, you know, allergy-causing impurities out there, the difference in the HEPA filter is that it does have a filter with holes that ultimately particles can get through. Or... It clogs up very easily. It uses a fairly powerful fan, fan to draw stuff through with a lot of noise. And those filters do clog up over time. With the ionizer, there is no filter. It's basically precipitating the dirt out to all the walls and the floor and the ceiling of the room. And yes, that is dirty. But ultimately, is it better on the walls or is it better in your lungs? Because you'd be breathing that dust, dust in otherwise. And because it's ions... It works at a molecular level. It does get the smallest impurities out, and that could be airborne bacteria and viruses and things like that. They did research. They put these in schools and found that uh, cross-infection between pupils was much lower within the classes of ionizers. And likewise, they test them in the hospitals. And ionization is still used in hospitals, as far as I know, but they use... Uh, the sharp plasma cluster is one system that's used, which produces both positive and negative ions. I'm not sure the science behind that. But there are ways to uh, avoid, you know, there are ways to harvest the dust. You can, one of the systems that uses, you get an ionizer of the mat that is charged at a very slight positive voltage with respect to mains ground, which is what this unit uh, relies on, is that other connection via the mains wiring. And uh, if you put that bias in, it will theoretically, preferentially attract the dust and dirt to that mat. And in a way, these units, if you get a table in a room, there's the table, and you sit the unit just at the back of the table with the needles pointing forwards like that, that's not going to be very effective. Technically speaking, if that's the table there, and you've got the ionizer there, then it's creating a charge in that area, but the table itself will act as a ground reference. So if you sit the ionizer with the front protruding over the table, then it's going to create more of a sort of charge in front of the unit. And it does require that the air in the room is turbulent, but air in the room is turbulent. It does, it's always moving around to allow the contaminated air to go past that sort of charge, that corona zone, which, corona zone, that charged uh, electrostatic zone that where it will be a take on the charge and then get precipitated out. But it makes me realise that uh, Chizevsky's chandelier, which was hung from the ceiling with sort of circles, I believe, with loads of needles coming off them, it makes me realise that hanging it from the middle of the ceiling was probably a really good idea because that created them the largest area without there being a, the closest grounded surface was effectively the ceiling. So if that was suspended down the middle of a building, it would have a more profound effect on cleaning the air in a room. That does make me think of the uh, 
the little uh, I featured in another video. It was a, a little rod ionizer that plugs into a lamp holder and suspends in the middle of the room. It's for chicken coops and things like that to actually clear the dander and prevent cross infection between the birds. Other things. I found this picture while I was looking for Chizevsky's chandeliers. And this is uh, in Russia. And initially I thought, are they actually trying to charge the air in the middle of a park? With that, but it turns out it's a monument because it wouldn't have made much sense because it's all stainless steel, the look of it, and that would not work. It, the, this whole body would have to be plastic to actually work, but it made me think that would be pretty cool. Having a huge source of negative ions in the middle of a park would just be quite an interesting art thing. I have made many ionizers myself in the past. This one goes back a long way. I featured this in a live stream recently, the Baryon 2, which is a, a very long multiplier stage inside a piece of plastic plumbing pipe. And the electrode in the end, which I've misplaced, was a, copper, a brass disc, which was a piezoelectric disc with uh, just a jack plug that goes into the end of here. And then it was, actually it's two of them. But it's uh, then the needles are all soldered on, so it had a fan of needles. That was really effective. It was a quite a high power. The, I used 100 nanofarad capacitors in this, I think, as opposed to the 10 nanofarad. I don't think it necessarily increases the output that much, but it, I mean, it will have an effect. It depends how receptive the air is to the charge. And I think that this, uh, you can also, in my other models, I've gone up to 30 stages, well, 30 capacitors, which uh, technically speaking, I think that's 15 stage. I'm not sure, I think it is. And that uh, each stage multiplies it by the uh, peak mains voltage times two, but it adds on, it doesn't multiply, it doesn't go like 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64 kV or whatever like that. It only adds the mains voltage on each time in each capacitor. So, you know, just uh, adding one more stage wouldn't suddenly make it suitable for... Uh, 120 volts. In this case, you'd have to extend that considerably for a, a 120 volt supply. I don't think I've ever seen a 120 volt ionizer with a double section of stage. Not how well sure that would work. Uh, where was I going there? Yes, I increased the number of stages, but in reality, I think that because this effectively, it's very low current throughput from this, whatever the voltage the air is ionising at, the voltage will tend to drop down on the multiplier to that level. Let's open another ionizer. Let's open this, I think it's made in Israel, this one. Boring potted model, module, that's a clue as to what's inside. What's it say? Made in Israel. It is an, um, it is an Israeli ionizer. Let's pop these little cork feet off with gooey residue of the adhesive and let's open this. I think I'll need a different screwdriver for this. I bought far too many ionizers. Whenever I saw them at sort of like the, the junkyard sales, I'd buy them because I, I quite like all the different types. They used to be really, really popular. I don't think there's many manufacturers still making them. You can buy the modules on eBay, um, but they're just designed to incorporate into things. And I'm not sure the circuitry in those. I think it's mainly based around a uh, thyristor and small uh, sort of step-up transformer, just to keep the circuitry as cheap and simple as possible. Yeah, this one is not exciting inside. This is a... This is a... A resin potted module that does not show anything at all. It's got the mains wires going in. The only clue as to operation is the, or what's inside, I'd guess that hump there is the transformer inside. It might be pulsing, it might be using a high frequency circuit for that. But it's got this sleeved wire for the high voltage going out to this. Uh, they've tied a knot in the carbon fibre. They've pulled it along the front here and then they've wrapped it around a uh, screw and washer with a, a crimp here to actually connect onto that. That's really rigid. Oh, that is sticky as well. Ew. Oh, it is. It's resin is sticky. Something has degraded in here. But uh, that's kind of, that's not 
I have to say, I don't find these as appealing as the ones with the uh, circuit board. And looking at this, I'm actually seeing that this one originally was designed to take a circuit board, probably. And they added this module in later on, perhaps. Yeah, because the module actually just sits into slots as well. That is very degraded. That's got sticky tape there that looks a bit gooey as well. There. Interesting stuff. They look as though they've been hedging their bets in lots of ways. It's got lots of mountings in here for stuff. So, uh, do I think ionizers still have a place in homes? Yes, I, I think they do. I think they still are valid. I mean, it's unfortunate they, their image, their reputation has been destroyed by um, the quackery that surrounds them, particularly those awful salt lamps that just glow. They don't actually create any ions at all. And the fact that people made huge claims saying, hmm, they're most invigorating. And, you know, positive ions are bad for you, negative ions are good for you. I'm not sure about those, but I will say from experience, and this might just have been coincidence, it wasn't scientifically tested. The first ionizer I built was when I was working with an electrical engineering company. And I built it in the workshop, and it was a small, the electronics workshop was a small room, and I got all the diodes the wrong way around. I accidentally made a positive ion generator, and technically speaking, that's going to have the effect of stripping charge electrons from the air and leave a deficit of electrons. And I was telling everybody in the room, once I've turned this on, you'll probably feel all invigorated, because that's apparently what they do. And, and they all agreed afterwards, they said, I'm not feeling invigorated at all, it feels really stuffy in here, and quite frankly, I'm getting a headache, and they were not impressed at all on the ionizer. And it was only after that that I discovered that I'd made it the wrong way round, that I had made a, a positive ion generator. Uh, let's take a look at the back of the circuit board in this one. Let's be let's be more methodical here. Let's get this out. It says BR revision version B. It's got pretty good separation. It's got pretty good separation. Let's go down uh, closer here. It looks very hand soldered. Well, it would be hand soldered that time. Let's see if I can actually, let's see if I can actually focus down here. Yeah, that's a pretty good separation along the back there. I mean, it is thousands of volts from one end to the other, but they've not done that thing that some manufacturers do. They try and save space by folding the thing around and they bring it so close to the other end that you end up with visible tracking across um, or actual because there's a high voltage difference, you end up with sort of corona on the sort of solder points. This looks a fairly logical um, approach to it. I'll flip that over so you can see the other side again and correlate things, correlate components. Oh, actually, uh, this isn't working too well. Ah, that's better. So there we go. It's an interesting thing. And all the diodes do point down to the main supply end. But yeah, very interesting devices. I do like ionizers. These are not the last you'll see on this channel.